I took some arrows for saying that I wasn't really clowning. I just brought it up that a lot of the Pleiadians look like Kevin Sorbo as Hercules and maybe uh, Fabio and Christy Brinkley. And that's what that's where they're always perceived as being. And there were no extraterrestrials that looked like me or my color or even other ethnicities you were hearing about at all. You know what I mean? And that's a very skewed environment for anyone that's a contactee looking for relevant information that has a similarity. It's just downplaying it. You know what I mean? So, and, and so it's not that I'm trying to discredit that. I myself have had involvement with a type of Nordic that I believe to be time travelers. So I had, I had to deal with that too, even after saying stuff like that. But, you know, but it's about including everything and trying to get to that bridge of the enterprise that was, you know, really bicultural, multicultural, uh, <laughs> multiracial. And then we've got to go to the next level of being a type one civilization and dealing like being on like a multidimensional ship that I've been on physically. What is that really like? It's not like the enterprise. You have not just different races on there. You have different species altogether. Some that are non-corporeal. They're different containers for consciousness. You know, it doesn't all have to be humanoid form. It can be plasma, it can be bent light, energized light, and other things. So we have to kind of keep that in mind when looking at the contact phenomenon and making it more broad, the modalities of it than what is presented through the media. All right, welcome back, guys. Today we are joined by Barry Littleton. He is an experiencer and jack of all trade in the disclosure community. He's covered a vast array of topics, including Sasquatch, ET tech, melanin dominant ETs, the paranormal, near death experiences, which he's had himself. He has a background in psychology, sociology, and ethics studies, and he's spent the last couple of decades helping at risk youth that struggle with behavioral challenges. You can find out more about his research and amazing experiences on his YouTube channel and his Patreon group. He is the multi-dimensional detective and contactee of many ET collectives. Please welcome Barry Littleton. Greetings. Greetings. I appreciate you having me. I'm very honored and glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you Looking so much for this. being here. That's my pleasure. My pleasure. <laughs> I discovered your content through, I don't even remember, it was years ago, but I just binge watched a lot of your videos at once oh, and there you. was one sequence of videos and of a topic that really caught my attention and i was like why is no one else talking about this at least someone is talking about this you're a positive et contact so that makes you also different than a lot of people they're talking about traumatic experiences and that's why we wanted to have you on and to talk about the melanin dominant abduction melanin dominant ets because like the hybridization and we're different races and it's okay, but we're also human and how different races of ETs have influenced the population on the planet. So I'm excited to talk to you about this. I'm really excited. Uh -huh. We just did a video on redheads and how they're, they're, they're a little bit different, you know, like we're just a little, we're a mutation. So looking at these genetic mutations and whatnot and how we, our external appearances and also like how does it affect our interactions with ETs and off planet. So I'm excited to hear what you have to say. <laughs> you know, that's fascinating. My, I do have one sibling. My siblings are much older than I, but one that has had a couple of type of encounters. They're not like mine, but something has happened and he tends to astral project and things like that. He's also a musician and he had some sort of interaction that went down with these uh, melanin dominant, what he believes to be ETs. They were actually redhead. They were black, but they were red hair. And, you know, that takes us in the whole thing of Peru and the redheads and the redhead giants and that whole thing that goes back some ways, both extraterrestrial and in lore. lore. So it's very interesting. You know what I mean? I have a couple of friends with redheads and they're interesting people. <laughs> that is, okay, so that is really fascinating because that was one of the pieces that I brought up talking about redheads is that redheads, the red hair phenomenon is found in every race on the planet, regardless of the melanin of the person. Brazilian people, I mean, 
Malcolm X was a redhead. See, it's not like just white skinned redheads. It's like there's there's melanin dominant uh, redheads. Like that's so cool. But an ET race that is like that is. And I've heard that many times that the the melanin dominant people that have the both blondish reddish streaks in their head hair of are of extraterrestrial genes as well. You know, I had heard um, one of those Earth files, Linda Moulton Howell, even before that, she talked about being in Peru and going high in the mountains and being told that there were um, relatives of these redhead extraterrestrials there. And they took her to a house and they went to this house and she described as having a some type of a door that was very odd. I can't think of it off the, off the top of my head, but when they knock on the door, this little girl answered the door, melanin dominant with this reddish blonde hair and said her parents weren't around or something like that. But nonetheless, that little girl was supposed to be, you know, it's things like that you hear if you really just, you know, have to dig a little because sadly the mainstream doesn't address it at all. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's why we wanted to hear these experiences because it's it feels so one-sided and it feels very clean and crisp and not and, and like cut and dry and it's not the diversity in the universe and in our solar system and an et contact is real and you were talking about how the the diversity with like on the ship is is there's there's more races on the ship than just a humanoid form we seem to have one of two extremes we either have like the terrifying ET experience where they're monsters and everything, or we have these like elven angelic looking beings that <laughs> it's not giving us like a good like reality of what is actually out there. I, I think we also don't address like there can be things that to us might be terrifying, but they're really high vibrational beings or things that look lovely and are really dark entities. I think having that broad perspective of there's going to be a lot that we encounter and the fact that you know we need to even just look at some more basic components of that as far as what we think even the humanoid beings are going to look like you know that's, that's a very very important what you just said and when dealing with the contact phenomenon and what's going on with it and the conscious portion of it which is most of it it's not all physical like what i went through most of it is consciousness involved also and you know we start dealing with <clears throat> excuse me like how space is actually designed what some of these craft are doing how they're using these things that are called black holes actually called makos and how those are actually the akashic records and they're like the hard drive of the universe and with some of the beings that we're dealing with that and I can explain that more like what that is if you want, but ultimately saying some of these advanced civilizations may no longer be in existence, but they were using space and these wormholes as their primary power source. And this whole thing is called a quantum hologram is when you go into these things and how this is a hard drive of the universe, they may no longer exist, but they still exist within this quantum hologram, within this Mako that, act, that operates a whole lot like brainwaves. You know, they're calling them conscious waves now and quantum waves. I've heard them called both. But in reality, these are waves that function like these black holes do. When we have higher beings that are trying to interact with us through that quantum hologram, through our brain, we're so saturated with negative encounters here that it can alter. We are strong enough. We do have enough free will to alter what we're, was happening in the contact experience. We can warp this the dreamscape whatever it is into this negative experience because we're saturated with that it's very easy to do that so it's something we all have to be aware of on the discernment level especially during the encounter you know if something so negative you know there's no doubt but is it something are you turning into something it wouldn't be for example like um ray hernandez friend of mine that I've done a little work with uh he did that study with uh, CCRI, used to be called FREE, the Foundation Research for Extraterrestrial Encounters. They put a huge survey, like a five-phase survey that they sent out across the world to real contactees. And the whole results they got out of thousands, it's a very good a professional done study, but it, uh, it showed not what we think, is that the amount of positive encounters we get are vast more as opposed to the negative. 
you thought you think it would be totally skewed the other way and when it came to something like that i never experienced the reptilians all right and it's supposed to be you would imagine that would just be so skewed negative it'd be unreal but it wasn't there was a lot of positive on there and a large amount that were unknown and the people that wrote out for that said that uh a lot of that was due to being really scared because of the being's appearance but they did nothing to them nothing negative so that has to be takes us even what we're hearing about them might not be all correct so i'm just i'm throwing that out you know just media so sometimes the data speaks even more but that's taking us away from melanin and dominant extraterrestrials which i know we want to talk about too but just that's something to keep in the general contact phenomenon because people i've seen so i've been giving enough of a platform to interact with contactees and experiencers of all different types and something that i'm you know noticing a whole lot is that when people have seen a ufo or something and i was theorized this but i'm finding it's very true that ufo you see maybe you and your husband or somebody sees it and other five people in the group don't see it you know maybe one other person other people going where where and later later you might have had dreams after that but that just you know that thing seeing something like that that isn't a drone okay we have this super conscious and subconscious a different vibration that all types of information is relayed during that is an actual encounter you wouldn't think it you know until you actually do a hypnosis over that that second even if you just were watching for a few seconds you'd be surprised and it's those people that are contactees more than what they ever would think i always had a <clears throat> theory that around 70 to 80 percent of our population were contactees and didn't know it because it happens in deep sleep and things like that and we just don't recall it so far nothing i've found to disprove that do you do regression therapy with people yeah, yeah, I do. I do that. And I do earthbound spirit release too. Also, uh, past life trauma release. You know, that stuff stores in our organs. Really, really devastating to a degree. And you wouldn't think that ancestral curses and past life traumas would store in our organs in our present body. But they do. It totally makes sense because you are the genetics of your forebears, like literally cellularly. It, you're passing on genetics. And I mean, they've scientifically proven that you hold six ger generations worth of trauma in your cells. You have that cellular memory, whether you're aware of it or not. There's things that you may have fears of or like just reoccurring themes in your life that are because of your cellular memory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's really dangerous because some of that stuff can stop us from crossing over to at death. So what is the best way for people to contact you, get a hold of you? I've got a lot of information on YouTube. I'm also, it's just Barry Littleton. I don't have a cool handle or anything. Also on Patreon, I'm just Barry Littleton on there. I do a little communication through Facebook too and Instagram. And also I've got a website, barrylittleton.com that needs some work on it, construction, but there are links on there to the other stuff I've done. You can find the full link video by going to allianceofexperiencers.com and joining our community. We'd love to see you there and hear your story.